Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lindsay and I am the creator behind MyCreativeDays.com and here on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook, on all the channels. Um, I love to show DIY projects, hacks that make my projects or my decorating go easier. Um, I, I share a lot of uh, frugal decorating ideas, thrifting trips. We do all kinds of things here on my channel. So um, if you have been here before, welcome back. If you are new here, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Make sure you hit all the bells and whistles and all the things you do um, here on YouTube so you don't miss a video. I'm trying to upload new videos, a few videos every single week. So um, there are new things to see every week. I started this video and I had cut my finger. I didn't notice it until I started the video, of course, right? Um, so I had to put a band-aid on that. So today I wanna share two of my favorite um, wood fillers. And I use these for two different things. I shouldn't say two different things. There are uses, they have their own uses. Um, and I have my notes here for what's the difference between them both. Um, but my tried and true that I've been using forever on all of my furniture projects, um, and some like home decor projects, wood home decor projects, is the Dixie Bell Mud. Um, I will leave links to both of these in the description of this video, but this mud comes in three different colors, black, brown, white. Um, like I said, I use it, I've used it for years on all of my furniture flipping projects. It's great for filling in veneer when you have veneer missing. Um, it's great for like scratches and gouges and holes, you know, if you have screw holes or nail holes. Um, you, I, I use it when I'm painting a piece. Um, so I put this on, um, sand it, and then it's ready for paint. I have this piece that broke off of a garbage can that I'm gonna show you the difference between these two wood fillers. So with Dixie Bell, either one of these wood feller, fillers, you do not want to put this stuff down your drain. So if you're using something like a spatula or something or some other, um, you know, applicator, you do not want to rinse this off in your sink and then let it go down the drain because these harden, right? Like that's their job. That's why we use them. So you definitely don't, do not want these going down your drain. So what I do is I use like a damp paper towel or something and I wipe them off and throw the paper towel away. So Dixie Bell Mud, one thing I like to say is, I'm going to just kind of get some out so you can kind of see the consistency. Um, when you are not using it, close it because you do not want it to dry up. Um, it's kind of like a um, like a drywall mud. Um, you do not want to also, so if this was a furniture piece, let's just say, and I'm filling veneer, you do not want to spread this on your piece and then dip it back in the tub. Just because I know that we are all washing and cleaning our pieces before between each step, right? When we're sanding and cleaning and all that, but there still sometimes can be like dust and debris. So you definitely do not want to dip this back in. So the more and more you use it, you'll be able to tell, okay, I need this much out for, you know, these screw holes or for this veneer. Um, but, and then you definitely, you know, after you've used it, you do not want to put the excess back in just because it's going to ruin this batch of mud. Um, so you just want to be, you know, you don't have to use a ton depending on your project on the piece, on what you're filling, obviously will depend on how much you use, but you just, those are some tips that I have learned using this stuff over the years that you definitely don't and do want to do. Um, so this stuff is really easy to apply. So if you can see there, um, I just applied a thin coat and then, you know, if this was a hole or something I was filling, you know, you just, oops, sorry. You just flatten it out. Um, I like using a splat spatula or like a painter's tool um, just because you can get it, you know, all cleared off. Just use a thin layer. The more you have on here, the more you're going to have to sand and work later. So um, in the beginning, when I was first using, learning how to use this, I would use a lot more. But now I've, you know, really learned how to get in there and then you wanna kind of scrape away the excess. And then, you know, once this is fully dry, it uh, it's ready to sand and then you can, you know, do a primer paint, whatever you're doing on your piece of furniture. So that is the mud. I love this stuff. I have it on hand all the time. Matt uses it. Um, we've been using it for years. 
Um, it's just a good filler. It's easy to use. It's um, flexible. You know, if I sometimes, you know, you'll be sanding, let's just say you have a couple of screw holes or nail holes on a piece of furniture and you'll fill it. And then after it dries or as it's dries it, drying, it may like sink down. Then you just reapply it. It's just, it's amazing. Reapply it, let it dry and then go from there. So it's really, I love that it's flexible and you don't have to be scared about, you know, using it. Or if, if you got too much on, it sands away nicely. Um, if you need to add more on top of it, definitely, you know, you can, you can layer it. Um, so it's a really, really, really good product that I will always have on hand um, for, for flipping furniture and just um, all my furniture projects. It's, it's so amazing. Another thing you can do, I forgot to tell you this, because I recently just started doing this. So you can use this um, as a raised stencil as well. So if you have a stencil, and I think I did a video here on YouTube um, sharing how to do this, but if you have a stencil, you can use the mud over your stencil, and then um, it kind of gives this raised effect when it's dry, and then you can paint over that, which is really cool. Um, I did it on the front of a wood box. Um, and there is a YouTube video for that. So that, that's another way that you can use this stuff. Um, it's kind of a fun way. You could do it on the front of drawers to a piece of furniture or like I did it on a wood like caddy. Um, it's just it's just kind of a fun, fun other thing that you can do with this mud. So you can see here as it's starting to dry, the thinner the layer you put on, the obviously the faster it's gonna dry. When you are working with this stuff, you want to make sure it's fully dry before you go to sand it at all. So if you're not sure, let it still sit because you definitely want this fully dry um, when before you start sanding it. If you start sanding it here um, before the kids are home, <laughs> just drop something upstairs, um, before you... Uh, before it's dry, it's just gonna gunk up your sandpaper and you're gonna have to redo the process anyway. So just be patient, wait for it to fully dry and then you can and then you can sand it. Okay, I'm just gonna set that there. Will not rinse this off in a sink. Um, I will not rinse this off in a sink. This is just going in the trash anyway, but even like, you know, if you used a rag or something, do not rinse it off because you do not want it to harden in your pipes. Okay, the second one, um, and as far as sanding, I, I do get this question sometimes too when I'm sharing it. As far as sanding, you just need a light sanding. Um, if you are, if you have worked with like your orbital sander or your serve prep sander and you're, um, you're able to do it, you know, faster or slower and you have a good handle on it, then you can definitely, I use those when I'm using mud. Um, if you're new to it, it might go quicker than you want it to. So just a, a hand sanding um, over, the, over the mud is, is perfect. Um, but you can definitely use your sander. Okay, the other, this is kind of newer to me, but I was blown away with this stuff. Uh, this is called Quick Wood. And this one, I have a few more notes here on my paper. Um, but let me, let me kind of just show you. So it comes like this. I got it out of this too, right? It comes like this. And it's kind of this, tan color. I'm going to try and get down here a little bit. Okay, I'm just going to grab some out of there and kind of close this because again, you don't want this to dry out, right? So it's nice they give you this little container for it. So this stuff is more like a putty like this. And when you're using it, you want to, the before you do anything, wear gloves. You should wear gloves. I forgot to grab my gloves. But um, before you... Uh, it went from tan, now it's starting to get kind of like a whiter color, if that makes sense. So you're gonna, you know, you're gonna play with it until it gets all one color, okay? So, um, and then what you're gonna do is, now again, I would be filling, you know, if it's, you know, a, a hole or something, you're going to put it on, this isn't gonna, I just didn't have a board in front of me that had like holes. So you will fill your hole like this, um, you know, but it's more of like a putty, like a Play-Doh almost, instead of this is more creamy. Um, and so then you will definitely, you would just put it in, you know, you can spread it out. It's very, you can see how I'm spreading it out here. 
Again, very flexible, easy to use. Um, but this stuff I learned the hard way. You want to use a light, light hand on this. So even if you're feeling a little hole, you don't want a bunch, you know, coming out. You want to use a light hand because this stuff hardens like a rock. It's it's unbelievable. Like it's amazing for what it does. But then going to sand it, you're going to have to sand it for a long time um, if you get a lot of excess on. So when I've used it after that first time, I really go in with this light handed. You do not need a lot. This was way too much depending on your on your on what you're filling, but like this, this can go a long, long way. So you, again, and this is like a $6 product that, I mean, it's, you don't need to use a lot, which is amazing, but you definitely want to use a light hand on it because the sanding, like I said, it hardens, it hardens like a rock. So the strength is 900 PSI. It doesn't shrink or rot. Um, the set time is 25 minutes. Now, the first time I used this, I I, I went heavy handed with it. So I think it, it, it was like a bigger area. So it took a little bit more time, but it says the set time is 25 minutes. So, and the cure time is one hour. Um, and then it cures into this like light tan color. So you kind of saw that when I took it out and then now it's this white color because when you play with it, you want to get it to all the right, the same color and then apply it and then now let it dry. Um, it can be painted in one hour. Uh, and like I said, I, I was surprised how hard this, I mean, it was like part of the piece of furniture once I got it on there and sanded. It was, you couldn't even tell. The mud does do the same thing. It's just a different application. It's just a different, um, a lot of people like this more because it's it's just stronger. And depending on what you're using it for, um, I would definitely, if I'm flipping a piece of furniture, let's say, and I want to make new um, holes for the hardware, I would definitely use this to fill the existing holes over the mud. Um, if I'm going to fill a bunch of veneer, I will use the mud over this, just because this is easier to spread. Um, you know, this is like Play-Doh kind of, you know what I mean? It's just not as easy to spread. Um, so, it, and it can be sanded drilled and tapped so so like where this I mean you can still do all that but this like it hardens to be like like wood it's it's just amazing it's just amazing stuff so um so it's great for I'm gonna I, I've used this on furniture projects um but definitely Matt and I were talking about the other ways that we would use this if it came if we had a project like that but it's great for dry rot knot holes, screw, screw holes, window and door frames, insect damage, furniture, gouges, and scratches. So this stuff, I mean, for $6, it's such a good product to have on hand. Um, and it's just kind of got different, somebody that's been flipping furniture for more than 20 years and DIYing for the same amount of time, I just would gravitate towards this for certain projects. If I was going to drill into this, you know, like if I wanted new hardware and I needed to drill a hole, I would do more of this because it's rock hard when it's when it's set more than just this where, um, you know, I'm feeling more veneer, um, you know, maybe holes that I'm not going to like re-drill into or nail into or anything like that. Um, or just holes, you know, like that you may have on your, on your dresser or something that you're filling in. This is definitely something I use on Furniture projects, mostly, we have done many flip houses and um, other DIY projects that we've used this for. This, I feel like, has a lot more uses, maybe DIY uses if there's other projects, you know, home projects and other things like that that you do on a more consistent basis. Um, so I would definitely have this on hand. Um, this one's easier to spread. The mud is. This one's more like Play-Doh. Um, so it just kind of depends on what project you have. For me... Um, I will have both on hand at, at all times, uh, just because, just depending on the project I'm doing, like I said, they kind of have different uses, um, and I like one or the other, depending on what I'm doing, the way it applies, the way it hardens, um, all of that. So, definitely two products that I highly recommend for filling, um, uh, definitely try both of them, um, and, um, keep them both on hand. It's just something something you will use a lot. Um, and like I said, they both kind of have different uses. 
uh, but I think you will love both of them. If you have any questions, leave them, let me know, um, leave them in the comments and I will get to them. But if you try them out, I would love to hear from you as well. Uh, if you found this video helpful, share it with somebody. Um, I, I want to get these videos out to as many people as we can help and um, encourage to DIY and flip furniture. Um, so definitely share this video if you found it helpful. And until next time, I hope you have a great day and I will talk to you soon.